The AM General High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle occupies an extremely weird place in American automotive culture. It's a military machine, the official transportation of the world's finest hellholes. But it's also the basis of the former Hummer H1, a six-figure attempt at a domestic Galan Diogen and a glamorous CO star in the silliest car chase in movie history, see, The Rock. Until very recently, you've only driven one of these things if, a, you once wore fatigues and answered to Uncle Sam, or, b, your successful New Jersey nightclub needed a tax write-off for a friggin' business vehicle. About a year ago, though, a third possibility emerged, private ownership for the ex-military machines. Online heavy equipment auction site Iron Planet bid on a government contract for disposal of surplus product, meaning Humvees made obsolete by the new Oshkosh Joint Light Tactical Vehicle. Prior to Iron Planet's involvement, disposal meant just that most old Humvees were sold for scrap, though they're not hard to find on eBay, either. The pitch to the government was simple, don't scrap these things, sell them. You'll generate more money, and the public will get surplus Humvees for a fraction of the price of an H1. So far, about 2,500 Humvees have been honorably discharged from military bases to private ownership a process that got easier last summer when Iron Planet began offering Standard Form 97, the United States government certificate to obtain title to a vehicle. That crucial piece of paperwork allows buyers to prove ownership, and from there one can pursue the quest for a license plate, although Iron Planet isn't making any promises on that front. For instance, it's easy to imagine that California might actively thwart the proliferation of menacing diesel troop carriers on its thoroughfares. Whereas in Texas, the DMV clerk might compliment your sidearm and don't tread on me belt buckle while handing over a vanity plate that reads secede. Check your state guidelines before bidding. And then examine your expectations, because a Humvee is unlike any production vehicle you've ever driven. Even in looked up H1 guys, the Humvee was never known as a friendly, or even competent, on-road machine. You won't want to buy one of these because you're thinking it'll replace your Jeep Wrangler for your daily commute. You do want one, though, if you're looking to build your post-apocalyptic hideout atop a 60-degree slope surrounded by a 5-foot deep moat. Neither of those obstacles poses a problem for a properly equipped Humvee, which makes it the perfect thing to park in your EMP-proof cement bunker. We drove a 1987 M998 at Outback Motorsports Complex a 600-plus acre off-road playground in Laurenburg, North Carolina. As an early model, the M998 featured GM 6.2-liter diesel V8 instead of the later 6.5-liter, and its green camo hinted at a Cold War anti-commie assignment rather than more recent sand-toned adventures. The paint is a clue about each truck's past, but beyond that you're on your own. Iron Planet's oil sample analysis is as close as you'll get to a Carfax report. But, given the prices our test truck, with hard top and lead headlights, sold for $18,250 it can be worth taking a flyer on a rig with supernatural off-road abilities. The naturally aspirated 6.2 hammers out 150 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque. With full-time four-wheel drive, 37-inch Goodyear Wrangler MT radials, and a 5,400 pound curb weight, the M998 is like the anti-Hellcat, traction is absolute. Its torque-sensing differentials don't lock, but you can ride the brakes and coax them into acting like lockers, depending on the situation. Like maybe you need to climb a 60% grade. And that grade is covered in bacon grease and ball bearings. Then you might need the brake trick. With the optional fording kit, the Humvee can handle water that's 60 inches deep. Now. The truck is 72 inches tall. Do the math and you realize that the engine won't be the only thing breathing through a snorkel in 60 inches of water. You know you've got a serious off-roader when you might need scuba equipment to drive it. A standard Humvee seems as if it'll handle water deep enough to float a Chesapeake oyster dredge. At Outback, there's a pond that regularly swallows trucks. The good ship Humvee took a wave over the bow and kept plowing forward unperturbed as water sloshed in over the side sills. In lesser trucks, you'd worry about smashing a diff on some hazard beneath the surface, 
but AM General had the good sense to tuck the drive train high in the fuselage, sending torque to the wheels via geared hubs. The result is 16 inches of ground clearance and a smooth underbody, allowing the truck to straddle substantial obstacles. The flat bottom also allows you to pick up a Humvee with a forklift, which could be a ballsy anti-theft precaution for a vehicle that doesn't have a keyed ignition. Spartan interior aside, the M998 actually has a nice ride. Maybe that shouldn't be a surprise, given the tall sidewalls and long travel independent suspension, but the Humvee's reputation suggests relentless brutality, a non-stop sensory assault of cranium-shaking violence. It's pretty smooth and not even all that loud. The hardtop makes alarming creaks at the windshield header as the body flexes beneath it, but there's an easy solution for that, lose the top and the doors. Then you'll have an open-air 4-door 4x4. Like a Wrangler Unlimited, but one that escaped from a secret government research facility where it was subjected to bizarre experiments that left it with off-road superpowers.